This is courtesy of GQ. Obviously, most of you are aware that Kanye West's next or new album, Donda 2, only came out on the stem player, something that he basically built in collaboration with another design or technology company that was already producing something similar and he wanted to basically you know do the Kanye thing and explore some new avenues in order to get music into people's ears pockets hands whatever it may be and maybe change the experience of it and judging by how he presents his shows in terms of fashion and whatnot and the shoes him everything right it makes sense that it's a bit more of a tactile experience right the whole stem play thing where you can kind of you know um, remove parts of the song you can edit it on the fly it's all kind of it lives within your hand there's no there's no um there's no text on it it's all kind of meant to be intuitive you know it kind of makes sense of his design philosophy but just having to go through the rigmarole of having to buy a new player to only listen to Kanye West's album is a bit of a piss take I mean you're having to pay $200 to listen to an album on a player that only can play what stuff that is permitted from the stem player side I don't know how they're gonna you know how you basically transfer files or whatnot um, I'm assuming there's some sort of app I'm assuming there's some sort of app, something that you use it just feels like a bit of a piss take it feels like a little bit of an unnecessary cash grab but I guess if you are Kanye and you're looking at the bigger picture in terms of changing the way the music industry works and functions and how artists get paid maybe it's a better to go about it if to anything it's just it's not dissimilar to what Nipsey Hussle did with his album back in the day or what Wu-Tang Clan did with that album that they sold to the dude that's in prison at the moment now um there are there are ways you can go about to do that if your fans are really engaged and invested you know like Griselda do you know they are they do loads of that sort of stuff where they basically do a lot of kind of we've got a higher tier of support if you're a fan and you want to get you know maybe some stuff that wasn't on the album only for you i don't know they do those kind of things so maybe this is just a different way of kind of encapsulating or, or kind of showing it symbolically by just having this player um because legitimately officially this, this album isn't out is it on any other digital streaming platform i don't know if that counts if it's not out i don't know but anyway this is courtesy of gq it says the co-creator of yay's stem player explains why it's a revolutionary device do 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 just a quick one does anybody here that's a kanye fan do you actually say yay or do you say kanye I just say Kanye. I think this whole Ye thing is a bit, it's a bit lame, personally. I understand the artist formerly known as Thing Cool, but you know, Prince existed. Like you know, we don't, yeah, you know I mean, like, it's a bit lame. Like your name's Kanye. West. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> It says here, just because Kanye West mostly stopped using all caps on his Instagram um, captions doesn't mean he intends to make the release of Donna Tony less noisy. Last Thursday, Ye announced a new album will not be available on your streaming service, nor Amazon, Tidal, or Spotify. Imagine Kanye having his album on Amazon. Come on, Jesus. And most contentiously, not Apple, which West says offered him $100 million that he turned down. It's not clear what $100 million was exactly for, though it's worth noting Apple Music has exclusive streaming rights to last year's Donda streaming parties, which set streaming records for the platform. I can believe that. I'm still, maybe this is the point not to be made here. I'm still quite surprised Apple haven't really made a real big push or a real big move to really solidify their position when it comes to like the podcasting side of things, or even maybe even live streaming side of things. Because I don't, you know, do they have a live streaming platform or is it something that's only plugged in or available for people who have a music account? Is it something that only certain people can get? I don't know. But it's really a shame that even though Apple kind of, I won't say they created, but they kind of popularized the way or method of listening to a podcast, right? Because it was always available through iTunes or whatnot. Um, I don't know if that's right in terms of naming, but it seems like Spotify has stolen the march on them, especially when it comes to the Joe Rogan acquisition, right? Uh, or licensing deal. But Apple have made absolutely, maybe they have made some effort I haven't seen, but it doesn't mean, I don't feel like they've made like a real big, like, you know, uh, splash like saying hey we're serious about this and we want to reclaim our spot and many people like we're the number one destination for podcasts but i guess they don't need to because everyone basically has their show on apple unless you have an exclusive deal with like a serious or like a you know spotify or whatnot even then you might have still like a kind of clips channel to upload some stuff on there but everyone that has a podcast basically has a listed on apple in some way shape or form so maybe they don't need to but i'm actually surprised they haven't done anything along that kind of lines but 100 million wouldn't surprise me because you know i'm sure they're, they're raking all that back in especially when it comes to ads and and whatnot um driving this decision is the idea of ownership 
sorry, a recent theme in West, every revolving mission statement. Yeah, kicked off February by announcing the Black Future Month, a rebound, the annual observance of the field's is antiquated way of honoring black community. This month, you also hosted a brunch, prominent black supporters, it's certainly the do. But the end game here isn't West's own version of a digital streaming service. Nothing Yay has ever done is quite obvious. Instead, Donda 2 would only be available on the pocket size, literally rocks inspired device called the Stem Player, which first dropped alongside the original Donda last fall. Let's people manipulate songs by isolating elements allowing them to be sped up slowed down reverse and even looped the only thing i don't like about this which i have to be a slightly i won't say contrarian but a little bit against the gain against the gain against the grain about this i think most i think the idea that most kanye west fans are like you know secret designers or like you know in you know whatever people in that kind of way or musicians or whatnot is, is ridiculous it's the same way as like you know if joe rogan thinks legitimately that everyone listens to him wants to do jujitsu no people want to listen to you talk about jujitsu and they get enthusiastic or happy when you sound happy but mostly they listen to you just for pure entertainment and because you occupy you know three or four hours of their day per day or whatever how many times you drop your podcast you give you people that they are really interested in they like you as a person but they generally don't give a shit about comedy i don't think or they give a shit about jujitsu or they give a shit about mma not really they just like like you as a person and i think the same thing when it comes to kanye they like kanye's music they want to listen to his album or listen to his tunes they want to go to his concerts but i don't think they're really that invested when it comes to taking part and standing for the rights of musicians and and it's even weirder too when it comes to kanye because it always again me being a fan it's just difficult to really but i guess that's why his superpower is somehow even though he's a multi-billionaire legit multi-billionaire he somehow gets people to care about his battle with the industries and his financial struggles and stuff like why should we care when you're like you know when you're set when you're all right like, wh why do we actually care in that regard especially when for the most part we've witnessed him win on every occasion every time he gets told no he always met, finds a way to basically prove everybody wrong legitimately we've never seen Kanye really take an L unless you know the only way he was even taking out really has been the whole kim thing right um and again we don't know the full details but in terms of just what we can see that's the only kind of really l we've seen him actually take especially when it comes to public perception and what you know i'm sure he doesn't care about that but that's all we've basically seen but somehow he gets us to feel invested in this kind of fight against the industry and all this stuff and rewriting the rules and for the most part we all know deep down that's not going to change right the music industry is a corrupt industry that's never going to change because you know there's too many people benefiting from how corrupt and backwards it is um from from the time i saw joe budden again bad example but from the time i saw joe budden fuck over rory and mall i knew that the music industry is broken because joe if there's one person who's been absolutely you know who's seen the darkest darkest alleyways when it comes to the music industry it's definitely joe budden even though lots of it was self-inflicted he still has seen some dark stuff he's been around dark shit especially considering his age he's kind of seen through he's kind of been in every kind of popping sort of uh, era you know when it comes to music and the industry and business and whatnot still with all that being said he still found a way to fuck up his friends even though he's gone through all that stuff you'd imagine he kind of would go out of his way to make sure his friends would never have experienced what he experienced but he did so if that's the case that leads me to believe the corruptions run so deep that when it happens to you even though you don't want to you kind of secretly hope that you can do it to somebody else so that they can feel the pain you felt do you know what i mean so i don't think this little stem player is really going to change anything when it comes to music industry stuff i don't think so just just the other day kanye was tweeting pictures of his fucking contract to get you know to put pressure on whoever the powers that be to get him out of the deal that he was on I'm not sure if it was def jam or no it was so if kanye west can be in a bad deal if kanye west has a bad fugazi deal kanye west has a bad deal then lord you know lord grant the kids coming up grace and you know uh discernment because if he can get fucked over you got no chance so i don't think this template's going to change anything personally but hey who knows in nature and tech companies are racing to scoop up real estate it says here yeah, the metaverse trying to change the music industry through a physical device would appear a challenge at most okay let's talk about let's talk about the person uh made in collaboration with client's company kano the stem players are uh, supposed to be represent the beginning of a systemic se seismic sort of shift in how not just music but content in general is created distributed and consumed we are ready for a radical break with the existing paradigm but one that brings more people in and speaks to human spirit that we've forgotten client told gq over the phone 
as he was rushing to a flight in Miami. But do people care about that or do they just want to hear the new Kanye West and Future track? I don't know. Do they really want to create? Are they see it? This depends. It depends if you agree with the whole like Gary Vee um, narrative that he pushes, right? Where he says like everyone's an entrepreneur, everyone's got a business, everyone could say, I don't think so. I think some people just want to work, be able to look after their family and chill. Like that's it. And I think they plan it. They, sometimes they, you know, they live vicariously through these bigger than life personalities like Gary V and his kind of bombastic ways and whatnot. And maybe they'd love to maybe start their own kind of lemonade stand or go and, you know, and shop in some, what you call it? Uh, go and shop in the market, go and, go and buy something from the store and it's resell on eBay. They'd like to flip as well. But, you know, they've got two kids, they've got a mortgage, they've got a husband. Like, phew, there's no time for that. Like, legitimately, no time for that. So I don't know. This stuff sounds always sounds a bit too airy fairy. It's like um, you know, Lex Freedom and thinking he can change the world with a podcast. It's like, yeah, because all your friends are flipping MIT guys, isn't it? And, you know, whatever, you know, hedge fund managers and people legitimately building rockets just, you know, to make life multiplanetary. Like, yeah, cool, but regular folks, they don't think the world's gonna heal with a podcast. <laughs> They're bunkered down with the AK sevens in the middle of Ukraine, mate. Anyway. <coughs> It says here, transparency is just not a feature of Klein's philosophy, it's also his philosophy. Before the stem player, Kano was most known for making it easy to build literally see through computers, and now Ye has fully embraced his ethos. On Friday, in February, he posted a screenshot taken of Kano's company Slack channel that revealed the most up to date sales figures for the stem player in hour by hour detail. At the time of his post, over 6,000 stem players had been sold in the previous 24 hours, translating to 1.3 million at sales of 200 per unit. That's quite good considering. I don't know. That that is quite good considering it's a item that no one needed before they the album was dropping, and there was no real rush to people to buy it. Even though there's loads of really cool videos of people remixing songs and stuff using a stem player, I didn't see anybody really pining for one before Kanye said Donda Two is only going to come out on that thing. So the fact that they were able to shift that many just shows the power of Kanye. And like he, like he can legitimately get people to go to a stadium and see him prance around in a puddle you know, outside of a, of a burned down house with, you know, the, you know, with the, with the production and the music all messed up. And you could also get people to legitimately part with $200 to pay for a, a, a stem player that didn't even have the album on the date it was meant to drop anyway. It's like, God damn it, man. Beast. <clears throat> And it's continuous here, while some of his fans are inter has interpreted this as a merely a play for the already wealthy beyond imagination West to get even richer, it's also not hard to see their appeal for his perspective on any musician for that matter. To earn the 2.2 million in revenue we made on the first day, the album would have had to stream, would have to steam, what well, stream, sorry, 500 million times. No, come on. To get 2.2 million, you have to stream 500 million times. No wonder these people are dropping deluxe albums and trying to fudge the system and do it. No wonder they're playing these games. Fuck me, that's a lot of streams for only 2.2. .2. Again, 2.2 .2 is not, no, not to scoff at, but 500 million streams. <laughs> Um, he wrote an Instagram caption selling direct to consumer also lets EA own the asset that's even more important to Spotify than money customer data true ahead of the two release okay cool anyway let's go um, what's the conversation that you had with the original intent behind it um, the designer says it's really what I've been looking to build my whole life I fell in love with the Apple products when I was a kid and then somebody destroyed my laptop in front of my eyes someone near and dear to me they cracked my laptop on a crooked floor and I saw it inside of it and all its components and that was the first time it made me realize that this world around us even the magic of digital technology is something that can be constructed and something that can be understood yeah i think <clears throat> sorry i can't copy my say fever i had a similar moment in the streetwear or just in my overall philosophy in life when i started getting really into streetwear and i first discovered you know japanese brands especially supreme for the most part i started reading up on every interview i could find of anybody affiliated with supreme especially james jebby of course the founder and when i found out he was just a regular english dude retailer who was you know as passionate about this thing of, of ours as we are in terms of the scene hip-hop um, graffiti or uh, whatever it may be fashion skateboarding that's all it was just a guy that was passionate about the thing he went out there he saw he saw a gap in the market he thought skatewear wasn't really being presented in this kind of bestest form or it given the best platform to kind of really show how amazing it was and then he basically wanted to put you know supreme on the same level as chanel <clears throat> 
or take the ethos of Chanel store, be able to kind of apply it in the Supreme store. And he did it. And that's one dude. Right. And at the time you look at James Jebbia as well, it's not like somebody that's incredibly, you know, full of source or whatever, right? It's not somebody you would immediately see on Instagram and think, oh, okay, cool, this guy has all the ideas. But if he could do it, that definitely showed you, okay, cool. Everything we see, even though it's at the time when I was buying it, it was insane. People would basically fly to different countries to go buy it. Aaron Bondroff has that famous story of him getting stranded somewhere and basically using his Supreme hat as a way to kind of get a ticket back home. Crazy shit, right? Like that brand was like crazy, crazy. It's still crazy now, but back then it was crazy. So for me to see that some man just made the idea in his head and figured it out and he can't even skate you know this is back in the day too when people used to like clown you in skate stores and say you couldn't buy a certain thing because you can't do an ollie to get somebody that, that could build a company like that just off the back of an idea because you felt that there's a gap in the market game changer <coughs> sorry about that continues realize that yeah that's a great word we realized that we could realize and that's funny you say realize because james terrell was an inspiration and his book called the extraordinary ideas realize so we we iterated on the functionality and we shrunk it down we wanted to be soft and circular more colored with lights that we have to appeal to your senses we wanted to create emotional technology that's also sensory almost sin 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 that's what Pharrell's got, right? That word. I can't even say it. Cinesiac. I remember there was a time when um, I found out Pharrell has that. And I tried to lie and say I had that too. <laughs> anyway, so not to say these uh, black screens, black boxes, squares that we feel information on, but something more that feels like an extension of your body, something more organic. Ergonomic, sorry. I could definitely see the stem player being used by like live performers a lot more, um, especially when it comes to DJs and all that sort of stuff. Like, I think I remember seeing, and I said it before, when I was at Fabric, like being in Fabric and then seeing the DJ's booth from behind, especially when you're inside that little cage and you could see it. It's just, just got basically a row of CDJs and a row of mixers at the bottom. And it's so dark in it that the, all you see is just the illuminating light of the CDJs, right? Just blaring off this thing. And it immediately made me think of the Virgil Abloh see-through um, CDs that he made, right? Um, for Pioneer. That didn't have any markings or labeling on them. They were just clear and the lights just... And I remember thinking, oh, how do you remember what anything is? But when you're in the environment and you're actually playing and you're in your groove, it's all kind of... It all comes back. It's all kind of uh, second nature. You definitely figure out straight away, okay, this is loop. This is tempo change. This is skip. This is play port. <laughs> You could figure out quite quickly because you're not really looking at the name. You're just looking at the colors. You just remember the colors. You're in the you're in the zone. You know what I mean, like, I could definitely see something like that happening with Pioneer going forward. CDJs where they just got no labeling, no marking, no text or nothing. It's just plain. And maybe those are just used for like you know festivals or clubs or whatnot. Because I think it gives it a different glow, different warp. I don't know. Anyway, continue. Some inspiration of the photos when the player launched were literal rocks. Yeah, for sure. We looked at stress balls. We looked at products that had been designed for people with autism. We looked at video games. Wow. We looked at machines and obviously Kena products were a huge prosperation. We worked very closely with the production engineers on both Jesus as King and Donda to take their sense of the music production and make it handheld and listenable and simple. Even for a six-year-old, we rolled out products at the Easy Christian Academy. So the kids were the important co crew design as well. Yes, me da, 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 da. Companies are typically so hush about saying how many units they've, they've sell and how they sell it. He says we were together when we posted that. That's but that's my company. We designed the first ever transparent build your own computer. And my fundamental opinion is that the more we can see together, the more we can be together. True. The more together we'll be. I agree with that one. There's a grand truth that we all have much more in common than we um, than those who obscure the facts would like us to believe. And I like and I think also when people can see how things actually are, they're creating creativity will rise up and within them people are so much smarter than many of their major media outlets might give them credit for we uh, get talked down to we are divided we get distracted it's all about who's got this who's got that and how they get it it's like no let's like uh just post the numbers and let's see how things work and then it's just going to work better for everyone I agree with that one so this is all ladders up to a unified theme for a goal in my some sense i believe so it's also in, i've also enjoyed working with Kanye and our ability to reach the end conclusion will argue we'll go back and forth but it's all just about getting closer to the goal the work comes first and i think transparency simplicity humanity creativity are all four goals that i've always had in work on my team okay those are the four goals he likes transparency simplicity humanity and creativity i like that and i think he has given us tremendous opportunity to work with him to deliver for him his platform that embodies them as well that's one thing he doesn't really get enough credit for in it i think for as much for as much as a dick as Kanye can come across 
in his kind of personal life and his dealings when it comes to him as a creative or as like a businessman you don't really hear a lot of people of course you know big sean says he owes he's owed six million but then you know who knows but for the most part people always have good things to say about him in it really really good things to say about him even the recent little clip i saw five year foreign on dj academics podcast we mentioned something like oh um yeah kanye is actually doing everything like he's on you know he's rapping he's writing a verse He's uh, talking on the phone to some architect about building, he's designing, he's picking color palettes for Yeezys. Like, he's doing it all on the go at the same time. Everything informs everything. And you kind of feel it with the stuff that he makes. You know what I mean? I definitely don't think he's bluffing in that regard, but everyone he works with always has good things to say about him. They say, yeah, he's a beast. I mean, he's a great person to work, a great collaborator. Um, you know, he makes you, he makes you basically feel like a kid again, you know, because everything is possible, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but yeah. To be clear, do you have to buy the template? Listen to Dollar. Yes, you'll need a template. Listen to Dollar too. Uh, yeah. Say what? Would the, yeah, I want to hear what he says here. What would you say to those people who are confused or unhappy about that? He says, "Well, remember, you're not spending two hundred dollars for an album. You're spending two hundred dollars for a revolutionary device that allows you to listen to music." Nah, come on, come on, though, guy. You know, most people don't give a shit about that player. They're only buying it because they want to listen to the music, to listen to the album. Maybe it might turn into one of those things where. <clears throat> Yeah, maybe my turn of the things, but I don't know. It's more of a way for to say. I wonder, do people are there people out there who ex are there people out there who buy like an Apple laptop just so they can look cool, but then once they buy the Apple laptop for the social credit and for the cool points and whatnot, they then start to get into I don't know making tunes on GarageBand, you know, editing videos on iMovie or whatever whatnot. Is that a thing? All the people just buy them just for the image thing and just they're always on google chrome and that's it they don't actually use any apps they don't do anything else it's just they just use it as a laptop to stream and listen to music i wonder but i think most people don't i think most people buy whatever they're buying for what they're gonna buy it for they don't just buy it and then suddenly they then become it's like that advert um that famous advert about that the dreamers and the creatives that apple did back in the day i think if you're creative you're gonna maybe get drawn to apple products more because you know of the marketing they've done with it and whatnot but it's not as if like you're buying it under the guise that this is going to unlock my creativity it's just like no you think it looks cool people in your industry use it so you want to use it too maybe there's better apps on it for you to use as opposed to using window machine i don't know but it's not as if like you buy it under the guise of i'm going to use it to word process and then you suddenly get it like oh my god i'm picasso i don't think so right i don't know maybe i'm wrong but anyway it continues he says uh, you're spending two hundred dollars for a revolutionary device that lets you listen to music in a completely new way through stem separation and that allows you to mix and make music on the go but who wants that why don't why can't i just listen to the track how you made it like the experts made it because i'm not you know what i mean i'm not Kanye west he's meant to be the musical genius why can't i listen to the way that he done it why do i have why do i have to remix a song <laughs> And this is it. You're also spending that 200 to become a part of the community. Community, of course. That fucking catch all catch catch hole phrase. That what is that? What's a community? A Slack channel. Uh, a fucking um, a, a Discord server. That's that's a community. Come on, bruv. What changes to, to on top of that? You're getting done the two, which has enormous value. So I think there's a really important thing to stress. If I could put one thing from this story today um, that I'd want to make clear is that you're getting something revolutionary. You're getting a first generation technology product that has the best reviews for a first generation technology product than anything we've seen in a decade, maybe since the original iPhone. Yeah, don't get me wrong. It's a cool thing, but. I don't know. I think most people are buying it, are buying it because they want to listen to Donda 2. If they can't get Donda 2, they're not going to listen to their shit. But yeah, you know, I feel the guy, I think he's very, very inspiring, very, very cool sounding dude anyway, regardless. Um, as a piece of tech, somebody is a bit of a tech um, whore myself, I would definitely buy it just for the sake of it, just to have, but I'm not buying under the guise that, you know, this is some, this is really going to change the way that I kind of view the world and music is that, no, no, no. no. I want to listen to music. I want to listen to music. Like, there was even a time when I was actually thinking about buying an iPod, you know, like an old iPod I used to use back in the day and then just using that as a thing to listen to music with instead of having to use my phone because it's annoying. You know what I mean? Just like a standard, standalone 500 gigabyte iPod, whatever, just so I could listen to music because I miss that as well, especially nowadays. Um, I'm sure you could buy peripheries that you could basically stick into headphone jack to make it, you know, Bluetooth connectable, but I just need something, you know? But yeah, maybe I'm maybe I'm bugging.